One of the central texts of Tibetan Buddhism is the Book of the Dead. Once a person has died, a lama or a priest will read passages from the book to help a deceased soul choose new parents and a suitable environment for his or her next incarnation. The prayers are intended as a guide to help the soul prepare for a new life in accordance with the deeds and accomplishments of the life just ended. Nowhere does this belief carry such importance as with the selection of the Tibetan Buddhist spiritual leader, the Dalai Lama. Ever since 1694, all Dalai Lamas have lived in the Potala Palace overlooking the city of Lhasa. In 1959, when Communist China invaded Tibet and imposed military rule, the current Dalai Lama fled his capital and settled in India. In exile, he continues to perform the function of religious head of millions of Asian Buddhists. But how did he come to occupy this revered and sacred role? When the 13th Dalai Lama died in 1933, religious leaders immediately began a search to find his successor. But he had to be a reincarnation of all his predecessors. How was he to be identified? The usual procedure is that the old Dalai Lama, before he gets near to dying, and usually they know when they're going to die, they sort of write some letters or they leave a testament or they give some clues to their, their people and say, gee, I really like that area, I like that town, I like that family. So they take those clues into account. Then, uh, after they die, all the local psychics, you know, the Gene Dixons of Tibet, the professional psychics and astrologers are all consulted. And then they say, well, I think he's in the Northeast, and I think he lives in this kind of a house and this kind of a family. Deep in the hills of Qinghai, in China's remote western province, a young boy by the name of Lamo Dondrub was born to a poor peasant family in 1935. But this was no ordinary child. From his earliest years, he was different from other children, often even fantasizing that he would one day travel to Lhasa in Tibet, a place neither he nor his family had ever visited. When I was very young, I think two, uh, one and a half years, or the two years, uh, three years, you see, during that period, I always uh, telling my mother, uh, I, I will go to uh, Lhasa. That, and also uh, whenever I play, and also I play, now I'm, 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 uh, uh, going to, going to there. I, I'm, I'm now moving, moving to Lhasa. News of the young Lamo Dondrub soon reached Lhasa. In 1937, a search party of disguised high lamas from the Tibetan government set out for the tiny village to investigate the two-and-a-half-year-old boy that they had heard about. Could he possibly be the reincarnated Dalai Lama? From an array of similar items, the young boy was asked to pick out clothing and religious objects that belonged to the previous Dalai Lama. He unhesitatingly chose every item correctly. At one point, he reached out for the Dalai Lama's rosary and claimed that it was once his own. Lamo Dandra was then subjected to a physical examination in which his body was inspected for certain marks traditionally associated with Dalai Lamas. These included large ears, upward curving eyebrows, moles in certain locations of the torso, and a palm print resembling the design of a conch shell. Without exception, each telltale sign was there. The reincarnated 14th Dalai Lama had been found. Today, the Dalai Lama is revered by Buddhists everywhere. He is not only the leader of one of the Earth's great religions, but he is accepted by all of his followers 
as the reincarnation of all 13 previous Dalai Lamas. Western belief in the rebirth of the soul may already have been well established by the time of the ancient Egyptians. Pharaoh Amenemhat I of the 12th dynasty ruled the country during the period known as the Middle Kingdom, some 4,500 years ago. According to some scholars, he was popularly known as he who repeats his births giving us tantalizing insight into the possible widespread acceptance that the Pharaoh lived on after death. The Greeks and Romans attributed belief in reincarnation to an Egyptian mystic known as Thoth Hermes. The soul passes from form to form, from level to level, and the mansions of its pilgrimage are many. Thou mortals puttest off thy bodies as raiments. Yet thou art from old, O soul of man. Thy soul art everlasting. Toth Hermes. Toth Hermes remains one of the most mysterious figures in all antiquity. Was he a human, a god, or a being of legend? He is sometimes depicted as the ibis-headed god of wisdom, justice, and writing. Whoever he was, he was to leave an indelible mark on Western culture. Some scholars believe that if Hermes were indeed human, he may have been the original author of what is known as the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Found in many tombs and crypts, the hieroglyphs and art that constitute this mysterious document often depict the soul as a human-headed bird called the Ba. After 3,000 years of reincarnating as plants or animals, some believed the soul would eventually earn its right to be reborn in human form. Let me have possession of my Ba soul and of my spirit, wherever it may be. Observe thee, my soul, O guardians of heaven. Cause my Ba soul to find my body. The chapter of making the soul join its body, the Book of the Dead. During ancient times, it was in Greece that belief in reincarnation eventually became widespread. and at no time more so than when Greek civilization was at its classical zenith. The goddess Psyche was reputed to have been one of the loveliest beings in the entire Greek pantheon of deities. Her beauty was so remarkable that the name Psyche was also used to describe one of nature's most magnificent creations, the butterfly. But because the butterfly was born of a lowlier form of life, the caterpillar, the Greeks had yet another meaning for the word. Psyche also meant soul, representing the ability of a creature's spirit to migrate from a lower order of existence to a higher, more perfect one. The Greeks saw great symbolism in the transition. What may have given rise to it? It is intuitively natural to the human being to assume continuity in everything. In other words, if you look around the universe, there is nothing that you can find in the universe that does not demonstrate continuity. When uh, wood burns, it becomes ashes and heat. When uh, water flows, it goes somewhere. You know, when water boils, it becomes steam. In other words, in every natural process, we observe continuity. And therefore, it is unnatural that our consciousness alone, or our soul, our deepest level of consciousness, would be the one thing in the universe that would not have continuity. One of the most ardent Greek believers in reincarnation was the great philosopher Pythagoras. <laughs> 